Rock and roll. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have an old saying in Ireland, like, one thing, it's your mother. And I suppose in a way, there's this feeling in this movie, it's really about the way, you know, a young teenage girl can, you know, the woman who bore her, suddenly she, that woman really bores her. And I don't know if that, that's kind of the thread of, this is really what's going on here. It's about that relationship. Yeah, I mean, there's a, it's, it's a strong parent-child story, you know, and that dynamic is universally appealing. And to really get in there and explore that was just, you know, one thing that really attracted everybody to this project. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people have said it's, it's an incredibly brave thing to have you know, a female protagonist in, in, a, in, a, in a big, big movie. I think it's even more brave to have a, 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 a protagonist who's got red hair. I don't think it's been a ginger leading a movie since, <laughs> since Lassie. Well, I think, so you know, I think, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> since Lassie, I think we definitely wanted to um, make sure, you know, the filmmakers always had in mind from the beginning that this is a unique character. You know, she, she's wild and uh, spirited and untamed and, and also rare. And so she had to have this look that was quite striking and, and quite wild in, in the hair. And so that was a, it was a deliberate story decision well, and a technical challenge, of course. What will surprise people, there's a bit of a rug pull. It becomes an incredibly funny movie in the second act. And, and there's shades of Beauty and the Beast and, and, and elements of Freaky Friday and even Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. And, and it's certainly more Holy Grail than it is Braveheart with boobies. There's that sort of right. humor all the way through it. But the one thing I thought, the bear, there is a, I don't want to give any plot away, but there's a, quite a feminine bear at one point. That's based on Khloe Kardashian, right? There's a huge similarity. Oh, come oh, on! Oh, no <laughs> way! You're reaching now, Unshaven. <laughs> Unshaven. Nice. He's um, bad. I know. I was thinking, uh, uh, the, the, we have, as I say here, a, a Disney princess who is, you know, in many ways, a lot more Hunger Games kind of Ketanist than, than you know, even Pocahontas right. or, or, or uh, uh, Belle. I mean, was there... Um, I don't know if, the, if, if there was a sort of a, 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 like, that was the message you wanted to send out, that this is a maid, Marion, who doesn't want so much a Robin Hood as she wants to be Robin Hood. Right. She wants to be this independent person. Was that something that was always in the, in, the, yeah. in the plot device? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that she happens to be a princess just raises the stakes of the story so that her decision carries a lot more weight than it would if you were just a commoner or a scullery maid, you know, that worked out of a bar or an inn, you know. Um, so everything is driven by story at Pixar and all the choices and how we develop these characters. But then telling a story, we knew we had a princess. We knew, you know, Disney has done princesses. There's other princesses in stories, you know, in fairy tales. And we wanted our princess to be very independent and she doesn't need anybody to save her. She can save herself. And I think that's a great message that goes out, not just to, to, to girls, um, but goes out to everybody that, we're in control of our own destiny, which is one of the, the themes of Brave. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, Scotland's a beautiful setting and it's a, it's a wonderful place, mystical and mythical and beautiful and spiritual. But of course, Ireland is even more mystical and mythical <laughs> and beautiful and spiritual. How come you didn't choose Ireland? It was a really tough choice. I'm really. not Irish. Ah. We are very beautiful people. We have. We, <laughs> you could have had Enya warbling over it. Bono we, could have been a king. He's always wanted to be I a know, king. We I made know. sure so that much. we got David McCarthy the best effect stupid we could, who was <laughs> Irish. I'm Irish, right. Ireland. And he, 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 made, right. uh, he, made some, uh, he and his team made some magnificent effects that, you know, water and the will of the wisps and the, all the, the debris and the amazing, uh, amazing effects you'll see in the movie. Irish through and through. Well, according to my my uh, uh, knowledge of history, right, the Scots are actually an Irish uh, immigrants coming over from Ireland to colonize this this island, the Scoti, as the as the Romans called them. So it actually is Irish in True. a roundabout sort of All of civilization is Irish. Off Irish right. yeah. course, we just got course. around. We got drunk. Things happened. Uh, the as, they yeah. as they do. As they do. I know that Pixar have had a, in the past, have changed horses in midstream, Ratatouille most famously, and, and yeah. Disney have done it, and it's, it's part of the process. And, and in this case, with Brenda, Brenda Chapman originally conceived the story based on her 12 year old daughter. And uh, just that moment, though, I don't know whether it is a very, very you know, dark day to make that decision because it's been done before and, it's, and it, is, it is part of the creative process sometimes. But just to sort of say, okay, this, this movie is, is going in a different direction, we've got to change it. I mean, was that a, a dark day or was it something that you yeah, just knew it happened? I mean, it's, it's always hard to, to make those kind of decisions, but I think that's one thing that's really inspiring about Pixar is they'll do whatever it takes um, to make sure that the story is right so that the, you, you get these fabulous tales, you know, um, whether that's move the release date, kill the movie altogether, or, or you have to uh, get a different director into the seat. But 
Yeah, there was yeah. always there was always great faith in the movie as as being the story that we wanted to tell. But I mean, yes, transitions are, are very difficult. But yeah, I do I appreciate that Pixar uh, doesn't shy away from. Uh, um, making a hard decision just because it's a hard decision. If what the film needs, you know, whatever the film needs, whatever the story needs um, to be at the best quality possible, they'll do. And sometimes that does mean new perspective. Um, in our case, over the course of the film, every three or four months, we built the movie as a movie and showed it to our colleagues and, and exposed it with all of its flaws and we tore it down and we fixed it again and tore it. That's the Pixar process is like, you know, don't be afraid to mess with it and muck with it and, and maybe even get rid of things that aren't working. We had certain scenes that, that you know, that, that, uh, that, that Mark loved and created that then he decided aren't working, take Not them out. Working. So we're constantly changing. It's an evolving process. And that really is that really is the route these films take. Well, I mean, we say that story is hell, and it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a great film, so that's the main thing. At the very end of it all, it worked. Thank Beautiful. You. Well done, Thank kids. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cool.